Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. Those who are strong and well, healthy, have no need of a physician. But those that are weak and sick, you know, if you're a perfect person tonight, you ain't gonna get nothing out of this. But man, if you're a mess, you're eating it up. You're like, oh my God, I love this woman. This is for me. Mercy is just absolutely beautiful. It cannot be earned. It cannot be deserved. Mercy is a gift. And it takes character. Godly character. To be a person of mercy. Anybody can be harsh and hard and snippy and snappy and get mad every time they don't get their own way. We don't need the power of the Holy Ghost. We don't need the blood of Jesus for that. But I tell you what, when the world had 18 years with me, I mean, I had a very harsh, hard, bitter, resentful, manipulative, controlling, rebellious attitude. I mean, I had enough attitude to go around. And it took a lot of God dealing with me and a lot of word and a lot of brokenness for me to get to the point where I realized that God was not happy with my harsh, hard, bitter, quick to be angry, hard to forgive people attitude. He wants us to be merciful. He wants us to put on Christ. He wants us to put on love. The Bible says in Colossians, put on bowels of mercy. You put it on. Just like you put on your clothes before you came here tonight. They didn't just jump off the rack and jump on your body. You had to put them on. It's a thing we do on purpose. You don't even have to feel merciful to be merciful. You don't have to feel it. You can be merciful because it's about what you choose to do. You can help somebody who in the natural does not deserve your help at all. You can help somebody that has treated you terribly and there's no reason at all for you to help them. But when you do, when you do show people mercy who don't deserve it, that's when you're showing yourself to be like God. That's when we show ourselves to be like God. That's when we can say, I know God. Amen? How many of you think you have a little ways to go in this area? I believe I do. Amen? Here's a prayer you can pray every day, Ephesians 3.16. Pray daily that the Holy Spirit would indwell your innermost being and your personality, that you would be filled to the full with the power of God and become a body wholly filled with God himself. I want to have a spirit-filled personality. I don't want to just say, well, you know, I'm spirit-filled because I operate in some of the gifts of the spirit. Come on. I'm spirit-filled because I go to a charismatic church. Did 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 and we jump around and pray in tongues. And, 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 and. Now let's have spirit-filled personalities. Let's have spirit-filled behavior. Amen. I love the gifts of the Spirit. I love the excitement. I love the enthusiasm. But I'm tired of seeing people come to church and jump around and shout and yell and do all kinds of so-called spiritual things and then behind closed doors at home. Come on, somebody help me. I'm preaching better than you're acting. If you want to see who's a real Christian, don't look at church. We all put on our church face at church. Go look at home, home behind, behind closed doors. See how somebody acts when they get that bad news. <laughs> Ephesians 4, 1 and 2. In verse 1, Paul is saying, I beg you to live a life that's worthy of the divine calling and have behavior that is a credit to the call that you have to serve God. 
How many of you believe that if we're going to call ourselves Christians, then we need to have Christ-like behavior? I, I work with God every day on my behavior. Not just memorizing a scripture verse, I do that too, but my behavior. It's important to me that I behave right, that I treat people right. Verse 2 says, living as becomes you with complete lowliness of mind, humility. You know what that means to have lowliness of mind? It means that you don't think you're better than anybody else. And especially when you happen to be gifted in an area where you're strong, that you still don't, that you realize that's a gift. Humility realizes that's a gift from God. And a lot of times when we have a gift from God in an area, it's so easy to get impatient and have a bad attitude with somebody else who's not gifted in that area. Amen? Amen. You know, it's really easy for Dave to cast his care because he's built that way and he's learned a lot from God. It's not just all personality, but it's easier for him to do it than it is for me. I have to work at it more. And he's grown to understand that with me and he operates in more patience with me now in that area. Just because you're good at something doesn't mean everybody's good at it. And God doesn't want you to have a, an impatient or a judgmental attitude toward them because they can't do what you do the way you do it. As I said earlier, I'm preaching better than you're acting. People that, there's some people that learn really, really quick. Our older son, David, learns really quick. And he would tell you this, if he was standing here, I'm not talking about him behind his back. He'd share this with you openly. One of the things that he struggled with in his life in leadership is training other people because he fully expects to tell you one time and have you get it <laughs> because that's the way he is. And so it's really hard for him sometimes when it, you know, sometimes you can have somebody working for you that's going to be a gold mine, but it may take them six months to get it. But boy, when they got it, they've got it. And so we have to learn that we cannot treat everybody the same way. That's why you have to get to know those who labor among you. You can't just assume that everybody is the way you are because everybody is not alike. We all have strengths. We all have weaknesses. There's gold in everybody. You just got to dig for it. Amen? Lowliness of mind with lowliness of mind. And humility with meekness, unselfishness, gentleness, mildness. I'm still working on the gentle, mild thing. I tell you, if God can help me get that before I die, I'd be ever so grateful. That has always been a challenge for me. My dad was a real rough guy, and you know, I've already got a rawr voice to start with, and, and I've just got that kind of rawr personality, you know? It's just like everything comes out of me like rawr. <laughs> Come on, is anybody with me tonight? It's like, I mean, I have a really hard time with, yes, honey. Praise the Lord. <laughs> but I just want you all to know that I am still praying about it, and I am still working on it, and I'm getting sweeter by the day. Aren't you glad that there's hope for all of us? Yeah. Jesus said in beautiful thing in Matthew 11, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. All you that labor and are heavy laden, come unto me. Hang around with me long enough to learn how I do things. And then he says, for I am not harsh, hard, sharp, or pressing. 
Man, I spent so many years of my life being harsh and hard and sharp and pressing, and I had rules and expectations of everybody, and if you didn't do it under those guidelines, then I was mad. I know none of you are like that, but, you know, I was raised that way. I mean, I was raised to, in a very rigid atmosphere, and it takes some time to overcome that when you've been raised that way, but God will work with us, and He'll help us if we'll let Him. Now, for some of you, that's probably very foreign to you. You're like, you just, like, we're born nice. But most of us weren't born nice. Most of us didn't just show up with a nice gene. We're working on it. But even those of you that are nice, don't be so hard on those of us who have to work on it a little bit more because you got something wrong with you that we don't have. Amen? You know, I, I have loud faults, but there are a lot of people with silent faults. You know, like I can get in trouble for making a wrong decision, but that's, that's really no worse than somebody who won't make any decision. They may not get in as much trouble as I do, but in God's eyes, it's just as bad, if not worse. You can't drive a parked car, at least I'm trying to go somewhere. I may go in the wrong direction once in a while, but I'm making a little progress in life. I'm a mover and a shaker, and a few things are going on, and we're helping a few folks around the earth. Some of you have been trying to figure out what your ministry is for 40 years. And you don't want to decide anything because you might make a mistake. How many of you know what I mean about loud, loud faults and quiet faults, you know? I finally thought, you know, you can get by with that anymore. We've all got our faults. But Jesus said, I am not harsh, hard, sharp, and pressing. I am humble, gentle, meek, and lowly. Beautiful scriptures. Let's look at Matthew 9. I hope you can feel yourself softening inside just a little bit. We want all the hard hearts tonight to be melted. Now, you know, you can feel real sweet. Right? You may be sitting here tonight feeling real sweet till somebody makes you mad. <laughs> so if you just happen to be on a sweet week, just don't get too proud of yourself because I don't even know what I'm talking about. It's like, oh, well, I just don't have a problem with that. Well, yeah, you just wait till somebody makes you good and mad. <laughs> you just wait till somebody mistreats you or tells a few lies about you or you know, somebody that you've been really good to, and then when you need them, they're nowhere to be found. Then you see how sweet you feel. <laughs> then you're going to go get the copy of this message out that you're going to buy tonight and <laughs> stick that thing back in there and say, help me, Jesus, I need help. <laughs> Matthew 9, 9. Come on, good message here. As Jesus passed on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax collector's office, because he was a tax collector, that's why he was sitting there. And tax collectors were wicked, dishonest, hated people. No religious person would ever dare to hang out or be, hang out with or befriend a ugh, tax collector. And Jesus walked up to him and said, be my disciple. Side with my party and follow me. There must have been something very magnetic about Jesus because immediately he rose up to follow Jesus. You know, I think that we'd get it more if we got it like this. Jesus walked by a bunch of drug addicts and prostitutes and said, hey, come hang out with me for a while and let's see what happens. But you see, religious folks would cross by on the other side of the road. Ew. Ew. Oh, we got so much to learn. Well, I go to church. Good. I hope you keep going. But you can sit there on the pew until your sweet little bottom is totally flat. 
<laughs> and that doesn't mean one thing if you don't get out there in the world and show the world Jesus. Amen? I hate it when I ask somebody if they're a Christian, they tell me what church they go to. And I, you know, I mean, I'm, man, go to church. You need to go to church. I'm glad you're here tonight. But we have to get beyond thinking that that's all it is. We go to learn what to do, and then we need to go out and do it. Do it. Now, as Jesus reclined at table in the house, behold, many tax collectors and especially wicked sinners came and sat. They saw that he opened up a door for people like them. So now they're like, hey, maybe we can get in on this too. And they became his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw this, they said, why does your master eat with tax collectors and those preeminently sinful people? <laughs> but when Jesus heard it, he replied, those who are strong and well, healthy, have no need of a physician, but those that are weak and sick. You know, if you're a perfect person tonight, you ain't going to get nothing out of this. But man, if you're a mess, you're eating it up. You're like, oh my God, I love this woman. This is for me. Hallelujah. But you know what? Honestly and truly, if you walked in here and you're a religious person who has no humility of mind and you think more highly of yourself than you ought to, you have probably already sat out there and judged me 400 times since you got in the building. I don't like her attitude and I don't like those earrings and I don't like this. And I don't like the outfit either and I think she knew, 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 knew. Because that's just what we do when we're self-righteous. When we're self-righteous, we think we have got it all together, but we never stop finding things wrong with everybody else. Please, if you are a fault finder, go home and look in the mirror. Because that is a symptom of a bad attitude. Man, I'm preaching good tonight. Go and learn what this means, Jesus said. Go and learn what this means, verse 13. I desire mercy. <laughs> well, why are you eating with those people? He said, get a clue. I'm not interested in your religious sacrifices. What I desire is mercy. That is readiness to help those in trouble and not sacrifice and sacrificial victims. Okay, last week... I got a call from somebody that only calls me when they want help. And I spent a lot of time trying to help this person years ago. Dave and I did. A lot of money, a lot of time, a lot of effort. Got him up and running. Everything was going good. Backslid. So I haven't seen him for seven years. Heard from them about three and a half years ago, they were in trouble. <laughs> now, another three and a half years later, can you help me? I really need help. I need to get in a treatment program. My life's a mess. I really need help. And I am like, <sighs> now, you know, I know you would expect me to be sweet and, well, of course I'll help you. Well, I got up at 4 a.m. the next morning, and I spent an hour trying to find a scripture to tell me that I did not have to help him. <laughs> because I did not want to. And it went something like this. Everybody's always pulling on me. It is my turn. I want somebody to help me. And then I told my daughter, I said, I think I finally figured out how to get help. Act like a mental case. <laughs> well, anyway, it took about an hour, and 
I finally said, oh, you just cannot do this. It gets you in trouble. I said, okay, Jesus. What would you do? <laughs> well, that just finished it. Then he showed me every, I, I mean, I couldn't find a scripture that didn't say to help the poor, to help the needy, to be merciful, to be loving, to be kind, forgive again. So I got over it, and now we're in the process of helping, and I know it's right and it's good, and there's no reason to do it. They don't deserve it, haven't earned it. Oh, but I tell you what, I bet you I'm making hell mad this week. Do you want to make hell happy or mad? You want to push open some spiritual doors in your life? You want to tear down some strongholds? You want to drive the devil back where he belongs? Then you need to start forgiving people and being merciful because it is totally unnatural to do it, but completely godly. Now, remember, I didn't say I felt like doing it. I decided to do it. If you don't get that part, you'll miss the whole message because that is a huge problem in the church. We wait to feel like it. We think that if God is in it, there's going to be a gooey feeling. Jesus did not feel like going to the cross. He wanted to be delivered from it, but he did say, if you will not deliver me, I will drink the cup. Amen. Well, guess what? He came out with resurrection power, a name above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow. Amen. Well, now I'll tell you another interesting thing. Happened the same day. Made the decision, okay. Gonna love unconditionally. <laughs> love believes the best. I pre I pre everything I preached to you, I, pre I had to preach myself that day. Love believes the best. Gonna help. Then I'm getting some more texts. And there's been a bunch of, we'll call them enemies. <laughs> after us, making accusations against us, publicly blaming us for something that didn't even make any sense. It, I mean, it was just crazy. Involved even a lawsuit. I've been believing God that he will give us favor with our enemies and they'll drop the lawsuit. Everybody said, they're not going to drop it, not going to drop it. I said, I'm believing God. Next text that came in, the lawsuit has been dropped. Then, one gentleman who was like this, he says he's a cross between an agnostic and an atheist, and he's been, you know, the blog thing, you know, something goes in the newspaper, then everybody says what they think about it. And uh, so he's been saying what he thought about me. And so he publicly apologized. <laughs> said, I'm sorry, Joyce Meyer, I was judging you based on what they were saying about you, and I find out now that it wasn't the truth, and so now I'm upset with them for not telling me the truth, and I love this. He said, I'm a little bit conflicted about this Joyce Meyer. On one hand, she reminds me of a snake oil salesman. <laughs> oh, you guys don't know how much fun I have. On one hand, she reminds me of a snake oil salesman who's stealing little old ladies' money. <laughs> But then on the other hand, she is taking the money and building orphanages and feeding the poor. <laughs> and so I just can't quite decide how I feel about her. I mean, the whole thing just turned out to be hilarious and what a victory it was. But let's don't forget that we had to go back to the first text. And the person that I didn't want to show mercy to but when I did what God wanted me to do, no matter how I felt and no matter how hard it was, then suddenly I got some long-awaited vindication from God.
Amen. You know, really, no matter how we may feel about something, maybe somebody's hurt us and we feel like getting them back. The Bible says in Matthew 9, 13, go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice, for I did not come to call the righteous but sinners to repentance. And, you know, if someone's mistreating you and maybe they've got some sinful behavior in their life, one of the ways that we can help bring them to repentance is by showing them the mercy of God. Now, that doesn't mean that you just let everybody walk all over you and you become a doormat for whatever. But one thing is for sure, we cannot be led around by our feelings and our emotions and ever really do the will of God. And I know that you probably do have problems with your emotions because most people do. And you probably need to learn more about how to forgive people and how to detect unforgiveness in your own life because most of us do.